Our text today is from chapter 3 of the book of Hebrews. The Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. There is one Bible story that impressed itself deeply upon the memory of the church. Moses told the story to his people in his farewell address. And in mournful tones, David sang of it in his psalms. And all the prophets plucked upon that same discordant string. St. Paul told the story to the Christians of Corinth in the first century. And now the author of our epistle tells it to us one more time. It's not just the strangest story or the saddest story that you have ever heard. The thing is, the story keeps on repeating itself in generation after generation. Our writer says, the Holy Spirit says that today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the rebellion as in the day your fathers tested me and tempted me in the wilderness and saw my works for 40 years. You probably remember the background. Moses and his people had come to the borders of the promised land. They were encamped at Kadesh on the southern boundary of Canaan. Looking back, it seemed incredible that they had ever come that far. Two years earlier, they were demoralized slaves in the land of Goshen. An 80-year-old sheep herder came out of the desert to deliver them with nothing but a shepherd's staff in his hand. Ten terrible plagues broke the pride and power of Egypt. And on the night of Passover... Their lives were spared by the blood of the Lamb, and they walked out of Egypt a free people. But time and again, it looked like their situation was hopeless. When they were hemmed in on the shores of the Red Sea, with the chariots and horsemen of Egypt thundering down upon them, when their march through the wilderness seemed endless, the blazing sun above their heads, the burning sand beneath their feet. When their canteens were running on empty and their food supplies were running low. When their straggling column was attacked by the Bedouin tribes of the desert. Now all of that lay behind them. At Kadesh, they could lift up their eyes and see the land of promise. That land they had looked for and longed for, had labored and borne and fought for. And finally, the command carried through their camp, go up and possess the good land which the Lord your God has given you. And the unexpected happened. At that critical moment, they broke faith with a faithful God. They refused to follow his leading. And they blew it all away in one supreme act of disobedience. But they made it sound very sophisticated. Uh, they appointed 12 men to go up and search out the land. Sort of a study commission to report back with their recommendations. Forty days later, they returned. On one point, all twelve were agreed. It is a good land, they said. A land flowing with milk and honey. 
And they brought back staggering proof of its fruitfulness. But ten of the twelve went on to report, we are not able to possess the land. For the people there are strong and their cities are fortified. And we saw giants there, the sons of Enoch, that legendary tribe of giants, and we be as grasshoppers in their sight. That evil report ran through the camp from tent to tent. And by morning, an angry mob confronted Moses. Would to God we had died in the wilderness, they said. Why did the Lord lead our wives and little ones out to fall by the sword? They said. Let us anoint us another leader and return back to Egypt. They said. And then God had his say. He judged them out of their own mouths and passed sentence that was irrevocable and fitting. Don't want to go up and possess the land? Then thou shalt not. You say I brought you out to die in the desert? Then death in the desert is what you shall have. Every one of you 20 years of age and older. And these little children who are supposed to fall by the sword shall go up and inherit that land that you despise. And your 40 days of fooling around will be 40 years of aimless wandering in the wilderness. I mean, after all the miracles of mercy and judgment they had seen, all of the protection and provision they had experienced did not draw them one inch closer to God. God had not failed them. They refused to enter into his promise. And true to form, the very next day they tried to take Canaan by force. They were utterly crushed by the Canaanite armies driven back into the wilderness in wild disarray. Yesterday they had it all in their grasp, and today it is gone from them forever. Yesterday they would not go forward, and today they cannot go forward. Yesterday with God anything was possible. And today, for them, nothing is possible. And the point is, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. And don't give me this, that it can't happen. It has happened. It does happen. Does an evil heart bring Unbelief, or does unbelief lead to an evil heart? What difference does it make? We're not talking about the do's and don'ts of religion. We're talking about the heart. A heart that is open to God, responsive to God, sensitive and eager to know God's will and to do it. But it all begins in the heart right here. To fall away from the living God. To break faith with the living God. People, to take your lives into your own hands is the ultimate defeat. The last crushing failure. Apart from the living God, nothing else you do makes any difference. Apart from the living God, everything else will be to you an aching grief and a bitter disappointment. 
for we are from him and through him and by him. And only in the living God do we realize our full humanity, our potential, and our destiny. Look at these people. Stalled out there in the wilderness. They can't go forward and they can't go backward. I counted it up one time. How many funeral processions on average each day made their way through that camp? Without the living God, they got nothing to do now. But wait for their own pallbearers to come and put them in the ground in an unmarked and windswept grave. Therefore, exhort one another daily while it is called today. You and I don't need more advice and information. We can get that junk any place. What we do need is encouragement and exhortation. You believers are probably in the majority here this morning. But it's lonely out there in the world. And on the firing line every single day. The hardening word means more to people who are trying to play the game with their heart. And who better to encourage you than your brothers and sisters? They know your griefs and burdens because they're the same griefs and burdens they've gone through. And if you don't encourage them, if our fellowship is casual and formal and phony, you tell me who else is going to encourage us. The counselors downtown will sandbag you and society drag you away from your God. While it is today, encourage one another. Yesterday is past and done. Tomorrow is a question mark. Today, we live. And the, that's the mistake the people of Israel made. They did not encourage each other when they had the chance. And then it was too darn late. But isn't this a great line? Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. <laughs> Not the sinfulness of sin. Not the wages of sin. Not the consequences of sin. But the deceitfulness of sin. It's slyness. It's disguise. Sin tricks us, sin fools us, and at the end, sin always cheats us. Sin lets me say, did God really say, does God mean what he says? Haven't the times changed? The old standards do not apply anymore, do they? At least they do not apply to you. You can sow and never reap. There's no day of reckoning, is there? And to the self-deceived, to the closed mind, to the hardened heart, no word of God can ever come. For we are partakers with Christ. If we hold fast to the end, the confidence that we had at the beginning, we share our lives with Christ. We partake of Christ's life. We, I'm in it with him. And I cannot live without his nourishment, his forgiveness, his spiritual refreshment, and his understanding. But as good a beginning as you made people, it can slip away. It happened to Israel. It can happen to you and me. That's why it says, today, if you hear the voice, don't you harden your heart. 
Today is a brand new moment. Today the Spirit is still pleading with me and appealing to me and prompting me. Today, whether there are sorrows and joys in our lives, today, whether your dreams have all been dashed to pieces or whether they've all been filled. Today. And if not today, you tell me what day. Today. Hold on to him who is able to make all things work together for your good. If you will only give him the chance. Five Closing questions. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Well, they were not outstanding sinners. They were not vicious criminal types. They were the most privileged people you've ever heard of. Just once, just once to have seen that pillar of fire and cloud that led them by day and by night. Were not all those Moses led out of Egypt? You got it, all. The whole kit and caboodle, every one of them was redeemed and delivered and set free. And with whom was he angry 40 years? Well, 40 years, Kadesh, was merely one place out of the pattern of behavior. You could chart their journey on a map by their camping sites through the desert. Massa, Meribah, Tabera, Kibroth, Hateva, chiding, quarreling, burning the place of many graves. Was it not with those who sinned, whose carcasses fell in the desert? People, they were destined for a homeland, for peace and a settled life with all the bounty that the good earth can give. And they went down in a wilderness of their own choosing. And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest because of their unbelief? Their unbelief. People not in the threats of God. They didn't believe the promises of God. And because they didn't believe, they were afraid. Afraid that the Canaanites were too strong. Afraid they did not have sufficient resources. And because they did not believe they could do it, they couldn't do it. But that's what unbelief always does to us. It cripples us. It weakens and makes us helpless. Not only for the great adventures of life, but also in our commonest duty. Do not believe you can maintain a relationship or marriage work? Then you cannot do it. Do not believe you can walk a straight path through a crooked world? Then you cannot do it. Do not believe that your prayers will be answered, that the Spirit will empower you, that God will speak to you? Then it will not happen for you. So we see they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. And so we see there cannot be any other end to the story. Amen.